Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of Romans 8. This time we're going to go through the second half of the passage from Romans 8. So we're going to be doing verses 18 to 39. Um, again, I'm just going to jump right in and read it to you and then we'll go through it. Romans 8 verses 18 to 39. Present suffering and future glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they have already seen? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searched our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For God foreknew who he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. All those he predestined he also called, those he called he justified, those he justified he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who can bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine, nakedness, danger or sword? As it's written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, present nor future, nor any powers, no height nor depth, nor anything in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, it's a, it's a long passage and it's a powerful passage and it has the two halves. The first half is talking about present suffering and future glory and then it talks about being more than conquerors. So we're going to jump right in with the first part which is talking about suffering and um, glory. It's saying that we should consider our present sufferings not worth comparing to the glory that is to come and it's not that hardship and suffering right now isn't something that we like we're allowed to lament we're allowed to be sad and angry and feel it but we shouldn't weigh it as so much worse than what's to come because what we have to come is so great we get to spend our eternity in heaven we're going to have blessings on blessings and we're not going to have to suffer another day in our life when we get there and so it's trying to say i guess put into perspective your sufferings because it's worth something your suffering now is worth it because you're going to go to heaven and you're going to have those great great gifts and it helps me to put things in perspective when sometimes the hardships i'm facing seem fruitless or sometimes being a believer is hard and it feels like where am I going with this and you have to remind yourself that it's for this purpose it's for heaven I'm gonna have um God is gonna get glory through my suffering in the sense that sometimes we go through things and the outcomes are so like miraculous that it brings glory to God because people who are not um believers can't fathom how something was how was that even possible it could only be through God and then it brings them to God there are so many ways that our suffering um brings glory to God brings people to Christ and um it's in that that we can continue to have a great hope for our future and get perspective in our situation that maybe my situation is to bring glory to you and um at some day I'm also going to experience that glory in heaven with you Um, God wants us to, you know, God wants us to be liberated, free from bondage. It talks here about how creation has groaned, like in pains of childbirth, and how our spirit groans. We, 
as creation, we long to be with Christ. Everything about us wants to be with Christ because we all have a spirit and we all um, are connected with God in that way. But obviously some of us make the decision not to live for that. But when we do live for it, we grow and we want to leave this present suffering on earth and be with he be in heaven and have our heavenly bodies. And so we do groan for it and we do eagerly await um, our future um, in heaven. And that adoption ship to sonship is saying, you know, we eagerly wait to be in heaven, to be with, um, to be with God. And then it kind of goes on about talking about hope and talking about how if we hoped in something we'd seen, then we wouldn't hope for it at all. And it's the same thing with that faith in the unseen. We don't have faith because we've seen something and we know it. We have faith in something we've never necessarily seen. And although in some senses I can say I've tasted it, I've seen it, I've touched it, I've been there, like I know that God is real because of my experiences. I haven't actually seen him. I haven't been to heaven and seen it. And so my faith is in something that's it's unseen and my hope is in something that's unseen because I'm waiting for this hope of eternal life this hope of my life in heaven and I haven't seen it but we have faith in it and you eagerly keep going and it's um it's an amazing concept and you have to have hope and faith in things that you haven't seen to keep going um but it's it's so interesting how it then turns to say about how the spirit helps us and I've talked about this verse before but how the spirit you know intercedes for us because it is hard for us we are spiritual beings but we struggle because we have human and spiritness within us and so the spirit does a lot of work for us he lives inside of us and he interprets our prayers and our needs and our confusion and all of that to God um and to God's spirit so that you know we are understood and we are heard and we are loved for and we are cared for and it also says that you know, Jesus Christ intercedes for us because he died for us, you know, he loves us, he's so connected to us, he talks to God and intercedes for us, he, um, it's just incredible to me that God thinks about us so much and Jesus thinks about us so much and, you know, it's just incredible to me. And for me, the best part is where it says, um, you know, and we know that God does all good things for the good of those who love him and he predestined us, you know, he, he chose us. And it says that we are predestined, we are called, we are justified, we are glorified. Your life cannot be um, a waste when God planned you, then you were born, then he called you, like you have a purpose. And then he's like made you right with him. He's glorifying you, blessing you. Like you, it's just amazing. Like we are called and we are wanted and we are chosen. And then when it goes on to talk about being more than conquerors, um, this is just an incredible um, part where it says, if he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? You know, if you think about life and this is all talking about, um, like we looked in the first half as well about trying to live for the spirit. And then we've looked at just now that there is, you know, suffering and that there is gonna be hardship to follow Christ. And when you think about all of that and then you read that verse, it's like, God gave his only son to die for us. So what on earth would he do for me? Like he would do everything for me. If he's given his son, he would do everything for me. He would do everything in his power to protect me, to provide for me, to care for me. And like that's immense. That's immense. God, creator of the world, would go to the ends of the earth for you because he gave his son. And if he wouldn't, you know, he didn't withhold that from us. So he's not gonna withhold anything from us. As long as you wanna dwell in him, he will dwell in you and he will bless on you. And that's amazing, um, an amazing, amazing thing. And then it has um, just the incredible bit where it's just so confident that there is nothing in the world that can separate us. And it's like, of course, and how can anything separate us? God, the creator of the world, who gave his only son, who didn't, didn't spare a single thing, for me, he gave everything he had abundantly to love on me and to set me free and to make me, um, you know, his his heir. And there is nothing that could ever come between us. Why would God let something come between us? You know, why would he do that? Because um, he loves us so much. Why would he give his son to then just let something rip us away? And so I'm just so encouraged. And the main thing here is nothing can separate us from the love of God if we're choosing to love God. But if we choose to walk away, if we choose to walk in a worldly way, if we choose to walk in Satan's way, then we have made that decision to tear ourselves apart from everything that Christ has given us. Don't let 
those things tear you apart. Don't make choices to live not by the spirit. Make a choice to live by the spirit, to have this predestined, planned, glorified life that you can have in Christ. Um, it's incredible. I encourage you to read this verse and pick out things for yourself. I hope that you've liked this two-part style video. I just love this passage. I'm just so passionate about the fact that we have such a great life in Christ. Um, you know, Christ just did so much for us by dying for us, by freeing us. The Bible is an incredible book. Please read it and read it regularly. I regret spending much of my life not reading it properly, not learning about who God is and who I am and how I've been called and how wanted and chosen I am. Um, I'm just passionate about it and that you get to hear who Christ is. And Please remember this, you were chosen to be an heir with Christ. You were chosen, you may not feel part of this world. For whatever reason, you may not feel that you fit in. And it's because you fit in in heaven, not here. You were predestined, you were chosen, you have a plan. God loves you, he's justified you and glorified you. Live in his way, follow him, give your life to Christ. It is worth it, it's beyond worth it. Okay guys, I hope that you have a blessed Sunday. I'm going to be taking a two week break from filming, from all kinds of stuff. I'm just taking a life break. I've been super busy and I've been doing tons of stuff and um, quite a lot of videos and other service things. And I'm just taking a two week break to just rest, um, to be with God and just give myself a break. And so I will see you guys in two weeks time. Um, in the meantime, go back through, watch a video you haven't seen or check out my Instagram. Maybe I'll be on there a little bit. I don't know. But um, I hope to come back refreshed and to just share more and more and more of Jesus with you. I hope you guys have a wonderful two weeks. Stay blessed, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.